When talking about the immune system, antibodies can recognize a wide variety of chemical structures. However, T cell receptors recognize a peptide epitope that comes from a partially degraded protein. But only if the peptide is bound to a specific cell surface glycoprotein known as a major histocompatibility complex, or MHC. Interested in learning more? That's what we're going to break down in this video. We are going to learn all about the MHC molecule and what it does. So stay tuned. I just mentioned that T cell receptors recognize a peptide epitope that comes from a partially degraded protein. Don't know what an epitope is yet? An epitope is the specific part of an antigen that is recognized by the immune system. In other words, an epitope is the part of an antigen that elicits an immune response. All cells, except red blood cells, have major histocompatibility complex molecules on the surface of their cells. We abbreviate this as MHC. These MHC molecules are unique to each individual. This molecule allows your immune system, specifically T cells, to be able to tell the difference between your own cells and cells that contain foreign particles. The function of the MHC molecules is to bind to peptide fragments and display them on the cell surface. This could include self fragments from the degraded cell itself or fragments from pathogens that have invaded the cell. The T cell needs to be able to discriminate the difference between self and non-self proteins. Now imagine a billboard sign telling you where you can go eat on the highway. It's displayed out there, big so that you can see it. These molecules are very similar as they display a sign, a billboard sign, for the T cell itself. It's either going to display self antigens, self proteins from the cell itself, that lets the T cell know, hey, everything here is okay, keep patrolling, keep going on, everything here is cool, or in its billboard sign, it is going to display pathogenic antigens that have invaded into the cell, and that allows the T cell to know something is wrong. This then activates the T cell to kill and destroy. There are two types of MHC molecules, MHC class one and MHC class two. MHC1 molecules are found on the surface of every nucleated cell in the body. This is why they are not found on red blood cells because red blood cells do not have a nucleus. MHC1 molecules present their antigens to cytotoxic T cells, also referred to as CD8 positive T cells. But what do they present? MHC1 molecules present short peptide fragments, usually 8 to 10 amino acids in length, that are derived from proteins within the cell. These peptides could include pieces of the cell's own degraded protein, so self proteins. They could also include viral proteins if that specific cell has been infected. If a cytotoxic T cell recognizes the peptide presented within the MHC as foreign, it will trigger an immune response. This will activate the cytotoxic T cell, which can recognize and eliminate other infected or abnormal cells. Let's go ahead and put this all together. MHC1s are present on all cells with a nucleus. It can show either self proteins or if it's an infected cell, it can show viral proteins. In the case that it shows a viral protein, if it's an infected cell, it will allow a cytotoxic T cell to recognize it. So the specific cells that recognize MHC1 are cytotoxic T cells or CD8 positive cells. When a cytotoxic T cell recognizes that the MHC1 complex along with the peptide that's inside of it, does not belong to the body or the cell, it will become activated. So here we have an MHC1 
with an infected particle, some sort of peptide that shows that it doesn't belong in the body, the cell is infected, the cytotoxic T cell then recognizes it, that activates the cytotoxic T cell. Once a cytotoxic T cell is activated, it will then um, form a clone of other activated cytotoxic T cells, as well as memory cells. Those activated T cells, cytotoxic T cells, can then start to bind to other MHC1 antigen complexes that have the same type of antigen to it. So they will start to recognize these infected cells and the cytotoxic, activated cytotoxic T cells will then release things like granzymes and perforins, which are going to enter the cell, perforate the cell membrane, and this will cause the cell to lyse um, or basically die. MHC2 molecules are found primarily on specialized antigen presenting cells or APCs, such as macrophages, dendritic cells, B cells, as well as some activated T cells. MHC2 molecules present their antigens to helper T cells, also referred to as CD4 positive T cells. What do MHC2 molecules present? They present slightly longer peptide fragments than MHC1 molecules. These typically range from 13 to 25 amino acids. Rather than coming from proteins within the cell themselves, MHC2 molecules present exogenous proteins. These are antigens that have been engulfed, processed, and degraded within the antigen presenting cell. This process is known as antigen presentation. This is also why MHC2 molecules are found on antigen presenting cells. However, antigen presenting cells do also have MHC1 molecules as well. If a T helper cell recognizes that a foreign antigen is being presented in an MHC2 molecule, it will become activated. So let's put this all together. MHC2 molecules are found on antigen presenting cells. Antigen presenting cells are capable of eating things through phagocytosis. So they take things in, they can eat it, they can break that down, and then parts of those peptides can show up in that MHC2 class molecule. If um, that peptide that the antigen presenting cell has eaten is something that is infective, so a virus particle of a cell um, or a bacteria, etc. If it is something that is not self protein that is displayed in here, it will activate a T helper cell. So in this case, T helper cells recognize MHC2 molecules. So if there is a non self protein found in the MHC2, a T helper cell can bind to that MHC2 antigen complex. When that happens, that activates the helper T cell. And when the helper T cell is activated, that is going to allow the helper T cell to clone out and make more clones of itself. So it's gonna make um, activated helper T cell clones as well as memory helper T cells. So the activated helper T cells will then be able to move on and these helper T cells that are now activated themselves are going to produce um, cytokines that are going to help to activate B cells as well as um, cytotoxic T cells. Now B cells, when a B cell is activated, they can form antibodies. So when we activate the B cell and we engage the B cell in this response and allow the B cell to be activated by the T helper cell, we can get antibodies made against whatever antigen came into the body. Cytotoxic T cells, when they're activated, can bind to an MHC1 class antigen complex, and then that will directly kill a cell. So when a cytotoxic T cell is activated, it will directly kill a cell. 
when a T helper cell is activated, it can then activate B cells. And when B cells are activated, then antibodies can be formed against whatever antigens may be present in the body. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you found it helpful, click the like button and make sure to comment below. If you have other topics you would like for me to cover, please feel free to comment those below as well. Thank you so much for supporting me and allowing me to continue to make these easy to understand videos. If you like my content, please make sure to subscribe and share my channel with others so that I can continue to grow and that others can access this information as well. Thank you.